Welcome back to yet another discussion about Dirty Bomb as we hurtle towards what will eventually become 1.0. But before that, let's ruminate on a few points made from the developers recently. In the Ask the Devs video on March the 20th, some details about how the plans with regards to card trading and marketplace integration were discussed. Basically, the plan is to implement direct player-to-player -player Steam trading rather than go for Steam marketplace integration. And then, to quote, We'll keep a close eye on that system and on the ecosystem, see how it grows, and once it's in a pretty healthy spot, and then we'll look into, you know, potential marketplace integration, or way down the line, workshop integration. So there's a few points there. There's the perhaps disappointment about us looking like we'll not have a proper Steam Marketplace, at least in the short to mid term. It also leaves us thinking about direct player trading. My first reaction to this halfway house player to player trading seems like it's a slightly odd move. It seems almost impossible not to second guess the reasons and motivations for going about things this way. What are the advantages of going through this two-step process over just using the market like so many other games choose to do? So let's take a backward step, and indeed a forward step in time, and think about how this might work in the future. First of all, a question. Who would trade cards in that player-to-player -player system? The giant elephant in the room for direct trading is money, or for Steam trading specifically, the lack of it in the equation. To be clear, you cannot put money, and that includes Steam Wallet funds, into player-to-player -to -player Steam trading. So, imagine you have a Containment War Best Sparks card that I really want, but you don't want anything that's in my inventory. How can we continue? Steam trading is actually swapping or bartering. You exchange some goods or services for other goods or services with no other type of transaction. You want my cow? Well, I'll take three goats for it, and so on. In fact, the problem we have when I try to trade for your Containment War Sparks card is literally one reason why a common medium of exchange was invented. Think gold or something else like a precious metal, which eventually became the idea of money that we've all been using for quite some time now. Bartering only works when each side has something that the other side also wants. Bartering via Steam trading would need some sort of hub for players to even find each other and say what they're after and what they're offering, perhaps a new subreddit. Also, without some sort of community where you can see other people's valuations and thoughts, the actual trade itself is like a small bubble where only those two people involved are happy. You may think that your Containment War Sparks card is worth two red Swiss gold fragger cards, but what if you see other people valuing them at two cobalts? It's a sort of problem a market with public pricing would even out. But there's no easy way to measure and assess actual objective value in a barter-like Steam trade system. This whole situation places pressure and incentivizes players who have long waited to trade their ever-growing inventories to either accept this barter-like trade approach for other items, or try and augment and add to this trade system somehow. Unfortunately, those waters are exactly the sort of place that scammers love to swim in. The trade now and I'll send you money via PayPal afterwards, or trade first and I'll message you a Steam key for the game, or other such promise. It's easy to see how people can be scammed when the whole transaction then rests solely on a promise from someone you don't actually know. Just so I'm clear, don't ever accept that sort of trade agreement. There are pages of advice from Valve on trading and avoiding scammers. I'll put links to those pages in the description below. Don't trust any part of a trade that isn't in the trade window that you click accept on. To this end, I can imagine players looking to other non-Dirty Bomb game items to use as a sort of medium of exchange, so that direct card-to-card -card trading isn't the only option. Something like, for example, PUBG items. There are probably cosmetic items with fairly stable market prices that are available in quantities for people to essentially use as trading chips. Those items could then be sold directly back onto the market for Steam Wallet money. 
But as you can imagine, this would add a whole layer of complexity to trading in DB, as people would need knowledge about the value of other items not even related to Dirty Bomb. So with all these problems and limitations, why not just go for marketplace integration? My guess, at the heart of the concern, would be how much cards would eventually be worth. Let's look at the situation now. Bronze cards can be bought directly for £2.79 in the store. A case for a specific merc with an 85% chance to drop a gold is £4.79. Obsidians range from £9.99 up to £11.49. There's been a massive build-up of items in people's inventories during the time the game has been in beta. Some cards are rarer than others, particularly the ones only available for a short period of time. But if the floodgates open tomorrow onto a dirty bomb steam market, do you honestly think that the value of a bronze card would hold above £2.79? My guess would be a small fraction of that price. At some point, I feel like DB has to get past its own past and take steps towards operating without the weight of previous decisions or non-decisions about things like players amassing commodities that then become tradable. I know it will be painful in the short term to require item pricing to become influenced by things like a marketplace, but the nettle needs to be grasped at some point. A page needs to be turned on past decisions. But that's apparently down the line. The devs want to check that player-to-player -player trading is in a healthy spot before they look at a marketplace. But that seems to ask more questions. Well, what would a healthy spot look like? Would trades need to be within a certain number for it to be healthy? What if some bronze loadouts are being traded for low-value Steam trading cards? Would that impact decisions about whether or not the marketplace integration might go ahead? And in fact, this makes me want to ask you folks a question. I've had a look around online for information about what developers can see for Steam trading in their own game's items, like statistics and so on, but I'm not seeing many public details. For splash damage to assess what might be a healthy spot, would it actually need the creation of a public resource like a trading subreddit to see how things were progressing? Or are there tools within Steam to allow them to monitor things like number of trades or more granular information like how often a card might be traded and for what? Let me know in the comments below if you have any insights. In fact, while we're at it, if you have any comments or opinions or just blind rage that needs an outlet, please direct your fury to the comment section below right now. I'm looking at the notion of player-to-player -player trading being added and wondering if people will be disappointed at the limitations that that system might place on them. I'm guessing, like many people, I'd like to sell my extra or unwanted cards for money, preferably redeemable in Steam Wallet funds, to buy other items and games. But the system we're initially looking at isn't that flexible. There will be hoops to jump through exactly for the sort of routine marketplace sale outcome that players will have experienced from getting items in games like CSGO and PUBG. We haven't even talked about them casually mentioning that they might look into Steam Workshop integration too. Something that I mentioned in general at the start of the year was that community content curated by devs can be a great way to generate new items and skins for the game. But that all seems like a long way away, so there's plenty of time for theory crafting about that into the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting subscribe. It helps me grow the channel and make videos just like this one. If you want to bother me on the various social medias, then there are links to a whole bunch of the rascals in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Mission accomplished. Energy calls are safe. Well done.